Watch KSTV weeknights at 7.30 and 11 Eastern and anytime with Inside On Demand on Channel 103. Now, Joker Phillips enters the 2012 season coaching for his job, and he recently talked about that pressure with Kyle Tucker, the Louisville Courier Journal. And Kyle now joins us from Lexington via Skype. Kyle, welcome. KSTV debut. Happy to have you on the show. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Now, in that interview with Joker, what got a lot of attention, of course, is that he quoted 50 Cent and 50 Cent on Oprah, which, which is an entirely different story. But he said he's not worrying about the pressure coming into this season. Can you ex explain what he said to you and what you think about his strategy? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing, the, the quote from 50 Cent was you can either pray or worry, uh, but you can't do both. And I, he said, I don't worry. Um, so I guess we can infer that that means he's praying. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, I think he's doing all he can do right now, and that is staying positive, um, trying to stay positive, convey a positive message, message to the fans, to the players, to, to keep people's confidence, to keep his own confidence up. I mean, he could dwell on the fact that he's on the hot seat. He knows that he's on the hot seat. He knows that they have to show improvement this season. Um, I, I just think he's doing all he can do, and that is, you know, putting a good face on, um, you know, trying to stay positive. And I think he does believe that because of some young talent that they have and the way they finished last season, that they might be able to turn that corner this year. You know, that positivity, you know, Joker staying positive, to me that's the biggest difference between Kentucky and Louisville football right now. There are a lot of things that are different, but the biggest is there's no optimism. I don't know what you tell fans going into the season, what's going to be better, what's going to be different. And talking with Joker, I know he mentioned some young guys that kind of give that optimism. Who are the players that, that he's really looking forward to? Yeah, I think obviously they're, they're excited for one. I mean, the most important position is obviously quarterback, and they had – Pretty abysmal quarterback play last year, for the most part, out of Morgan Newton. Uh, they turned it around late when Newton was hurt, and Maxwell Smith came in as a freshman. He showed some flashes, led them to, uh, you know, to some productive offense and a couple of victories. Um, he'll be back. Obviously, he had a nice, strong spring, improved, you know, got better in that offense. Morgan Newton will be back from uh, shoulder surgery and and should at least give them some veteran presence. He started 17 games. And then they've got the freshman coming in, Patrick Tolles, who was the top 10 quarterback recruit nationally. Um, you know, Joker Phillips said in that interview um, a couple weeks ago, physically speaking at 6'5", 240 pounds or so, that he's the most impressive guy they've had in a long time. Um, you know, they think he can play right away and they'd like to put together, um, you know, a simplified package to at least get him on the field early and get him going. So between him and Max Smith and even having Morgan Newton back as sort of a security blanket, I think they feel like they're going to upgrade that quarterback position. And there's not one more important than that. And then the guys that they're throwing the ball to, uh, wide receiver was such a problem for them last year. They were the worst, worst or next to worst team in the country in, in big plays, 20 plus yards. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that they just didn't have any explosive guys at wide receiver. Daryl Collins was a freshman last year. They thought he would be that guy. He looked really good in camp and then he went down with a knee injury. He's back and had a good spring. And DeMarco Robinson, another kind of smallish guy, but real explosive and quick, is a guy who broke out big time. He, he played some as a freshman last year, was a little disappointing, but really broke out this spring and made a ton of big plays in just about every scrimmage. That gives them some reason for hope, I think. Yeah, you know, back to the quarterback position, Morgan Newton, to me, as, an, as a fan, I guess, as an outside, he looks done just because he's struggled the past couple seasons when he's gotten in there, hasn't really taken the job when they've really tried to give him the job. Um, and he hasn't developed that chemistry with the wide receivers that you mentioned. Did you get the feeling talking to Joker that maybe that, that it's not necessarily not Morgan Newton's team, but just that they feel comfortable with one of these quarterbacks emerging, or is it still up in the air? I think Morgan will have every opportunity to compete. I, I think the logic would tell you that it's, it's probably going to come down to Tolls or Max Smith. Um, for one, just physically speaking, as I said, Morgan Newton had offseason shoulder surgery. He, he played the last few games or what made himself available for the last few games despite having a torn labrum in his throwing shoulder. He didn't throw any this spring. I mean, some light tossing, but he was not involved in any passing drills. He's just now starting to throw again. And Joker even acknowledged it's going to take some time. It may be a long recovery for him. That's a tough injury to have in your throwing shoulder. So I think the fact that he's, you know, he did struggle when he played last year while he was healthy, that he was injured, and that he's going to probably be a little slower getting back gives those other two guys a pretty big leg up in that competition. I, I really think it comes down to those two. But if he can get healthy, even, say, middle of the season, you know, that's a pretty valuable third string, second or third string quarterback. You have a guy that's, you know, a senior and started 17 games. And that way he could end up, you know, playing a role and being valuable to this team. 
Now on the other side of the ball defensively a, a little bit of a change in philosophy started last season uh, with Rick Minter but Steve Brown was still kind of hanging around the team you know he was under contract kind of demoted in role. Do you think now that, that they're moving into the second year of Mentor, it's all Rick Mentor, these young guys are going to step forward? Or did you get the feeling from Joker that they're ready finally to say, this is the Rick Mentor defense, it's all Rick Mentor, it's all these guys ready to make some plays? Yeah, well, actually, um, just before I talked to Joker, I actually sat down with both the coordinators a couple weeks ago as well and sat down with Rick Mentor, and, and he was very positive. And one of the things is, he, you know, he runs a pretty complicated defense. It's a, it's a sort of hybrid defense that can fluctuate between the 3-4 and the 4-3 looks. Um, there's a lot of terminology. There's a lot to know. Uh, and, you know, in year one, that was tough for those guys learning that system. Uh, you know, I know he came in at the end of the, you know, a season and a half ago. He came in at the end right before the bowl game, but there was really no implementation of his defense. So, so last year was year one. Um, he said he felt, you know, co coming out of this spring that he felt like those guys really understood more um, the system. They understood the terminology. They felt more comfortable in it. Obviously, there's less experience there. They, they lose about 60% of their tackles from last year's team, guys like, Winston Guy and Danny Trevathan, they lose some playing experience, but in terms of experience in that system, they have a lot more guys that really feel comfortable in it. And I do think that this year you'll, you'll begin to see um, some strides in that regard. Those guys really feel comfortable uh, in that multiple type defense. Also, he's had another year to try to recruit some guys. He brought in a class where he could you know, recruit for what he wants. Uh, he was able to load up on defensive backs. He was able to get some guys in that were hybrid type guys that can play linebacker and defensive end or linebacker and safety. And, and I think in these next couple of years, especially as he continues to recruit, he said it would take him three or four classes to really feel like he had all the personnel he wants. But you're going to begin to see as he recruits to his system and those guys feel comfortable in it, you know, I think they're going to, they're going to be a lot more turnovers and that, that defense will be a lot more sound. Now, quickly, I just have a, about a minute left. You mentioned these young guys coming in. Do you think you know, Joker is, is building a staff of recruiters? They're getting some talent from, from Florida and some other places. Do you think that buys him any time in, in terms of keeping his job? That scores him a little bit. Well, certainly when you can say, you know, look at these guys, and I think that's one of the things that happened last year. Some of those freshmen played. They played a lot of freshmen, and some of them showed up. Alvin Dupree, Bud Dupree is a guy that showed up, and, and they, you could look to this year and say there's some hope for him. If you can continue to build on that, if the freshmen coming in this year, if three or four of those guys really show some signs, even if the record isn't what, it, what you would hope it to be, to be, if they're a little more competitive in the freshmen and the sophomores and the incoming class, Look promising, and you know maybe he can sell that. Yeah, I think there is something to that that he can he can say. Look, we've shown some signs, and this is a tough league. It's going to take time, but here are here's this guy, this guy, and this guy that are the future. And and if he can show that, and people can see it, maybe there's something to believe in.